Hey, what's up, everybody? The mouse cam and the webcam are back. Look at this, the mouse cam, the webcam. Let's do a leaderboard speed modeling run. We got to get some good music going for this. So let's bring up the music for CAD video at the Too Tall Toby YouTube channel. I'll turn it down just a little bit so you guys can hear my my thought process going through this leaderboard. Here we are, TooTallToby.com. The tab here up at the top says leaderboard. You can click on that tab, it says leaderboard. You can see here that the difference to the leaderboard this month is that you need to be logged in to do the leaderboard challenge. And the reason why is because if we go here to uh, Nikola Tesla and we say edit profile, you can see here, first of all, you can specify which CAD system you're using. So I used Onshape for my last run. Now I'm gonna use SolidWorks. You can run this thing more than once using different CAD systems. So a little change to the rules this month. So you wanna make sure you set your CAD system here before you start running. And then when you're done with your run, you're gonna go here to where it says monthly leaderboards. And this is where you're gonna paste your video link. So I've run this thing twice so far. Um, this is where you would paste the video link for your run. Now these, to be fair, or to be honest, these are just practice runs. If we go back to the leaderboard here, you can see that uh, the first run was an Archie CAD, five seconds. Second run was an on shape, 10 seconds. I'll delete these, but I will include this run that I'm about to do now. So once you have your login created, once you have your country and your CAD system set up, you're gonna click here where it says speed model these three parts. Uh, what I like to do is click on the first one, then go back, click on the second one, then go back, click on the third one. You can either download these images or you could just move them over onto your second screen. So I'm gonna move these over here onto my second screen so that I can click through and model them. But you could also download those images if you want. Practice, practice, practice. You can practice as many times as you want. And then when you are ready, you're gonna hit record and you're gonna start recording your screen for your speed run. You're gonna try and build these three models and then you're gonna post your recording and then you're gonna add the video link to that recording under edit profile, which we looked at a moment ago. So when you're ready to rock, you're gonna say uh, compete. This brings up the proprietary Too Tall Toby speed modeling clock. You can use control. So you can hold control here and scroll your mouse wheel and that will make the clock a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. So that way you can kind of move the clock over here to the side of your screen. When you do your run, the clock needs to be visible. So make sure that the clock is visible. Make sure it's not obfuscated at all. We need to be able to see the clock. So it might be helpful to be able to see the entire clock uh, the whole time so you don't have to scroll up and down. Okay, so this all looks good to me. I think I'm ready to, uh, I think I'm ready to make this run. So let's go for it. Here we go, start. So now we see the clock is running and we are gonna try to create model number one and come up with a mass of 589 grams. So this part is in plain carbon steel millimeters. I'm gonna start out here on the front plane. I'm gonna sketch a construction line here for the total height or the height up to that, uh, the center of that radius, 65, then I'm gonna go up, say 15 more, um, and then I'll make one more line here. And now let's switch to regular line, draw a line that comes over here, down, we'll add our 26 millimeter radius, using some auto dimensioning there. And then we'll come back over here and we'll add our 12 millimeter radius. And then we will come up with a line here to close this off. Let's make this tangent, let's make this vertical, let's make this tangent. Let's make these two concentric, centric, there we go. And uh, then we're gonna add a dimension from the top here down to this lower base of 51, and then a dimension here to the center line across at 70. Nice fully defined sketch there, S key extrude, and we'll make that go out to a depth of 38 millimeters, and that's gonna be a right mouse button mid plane. So now I can get onto this face here and create a sketch of a line, uh, transition that into an arc that's gonna be at 115 for that radius, and then uh, another line here, and then that's gonna transition into a tangent arc with a radius of 15. And so now this point here on that arc is gonna be vertical to the origin. Uh, really, I guess this point here would be vertical as well. This is gonna be tangent to that top line, and then we're gonna do a center line here. We're gonna select that geometry and mirror it. And then we're gonna add a dimension, whoops, a dimension here between these two lines. That's gonna be 17 degrees. And look at that, a nice fully defined sketch. So we're gonna do S key extrude cut, and this is gonna go through all in both directions. So even though that's an open contour, SolidWorks is gonna let us cut away the excess geometry. The problem here is I cut it the wrong way. So in the definition of the cut, you have to hit flip side to cut. 
So it cuts away on the correct side. So now we can begin a sketch here. Now for this sketch, I'm gonna create a circle here. You'll notice that I'm locking that circle to a vertex. That fully defines the circle in one move as opposed to uh, locking it to an edge, which doesn't actually lock it. So if I drew it out like this, then you can see the sketch is not fully defined. So it's kind of a cool time saver in SolidWorks. Little pro tip there for the SolidWorks users. So we'll go here, circle, wake up the center point and uh, drop that onto that point there. And then for this one, I'm just gonna extrude this to a depth of three millimeters. And this is one of the rules in the leaderboard challenge that you don't have to use the exact same dimensioning scheme as long as you come up with the exact same geometry. So the geometry has to be exact, but you know, that, that feature dimensioned at 36 millimeters well you know i can do the math and figure out that, that means it's three millimeters thick and just use that as my um, driving dimension so you don't have to use the same dimensioning scheme but you do have to use the exact same geometry the geometry has to match so here i'm going to take my top plane uh, make a copy of it up top here and that way i can create my cut revolve for that chamfer but if you wanted to figure out what the math is for this chamfer you know by all means go for it you could just do it uh using you know a chamfer feature you don't have to do it as a cut revolve but i'm going to do this here as a cut revolve this is going to be i'll hold shift here i'm you see i'm holding the shift key with my left hand here kind of hard to see because of the contrast sorry about that but uh holding shift lets you get the doubled dimension for the angle and then uh, double dimension for the dimension, you just dimension it to the center line. So that's 19, and then that's gonna be features, revolved cut. Oops, sketch is open, what? Oh, there's a little sketch crumb. You don't really get them in the new builds, but I'm running 2015 here, so that's why I ended up with that sketch crumb. Okay, so uh, just hide this geometry here, and then I can go to the bottom of this thing. It's probably easier to create the bottom just as a circle, so I'm gonna, at this point, choose to mirror. Here's a little cool trick that I've been using for mirror lately. Pick a plane or a planar face, expand the solid bodies folder, hold control, pick the solid body, let go of control, mirror, and then just move out here and right mouse button. That can let you really quickly do uh, mirror, mirror all type features. So uh, this is going to actually be on the top plane so that I can just extrude up to next or up to uh, up to body or up to next. So now this is going to have a diameter of 32 and that's going to be extruded and that's going to go up to next. And then the cut extrude here is going to have a diameter of 21 and that is going to get extruded through all. And so then the final feature is just the fillet. So fill it with a radius of three millimeters right here around this entire edge. And then I'm just gonna show the sensor here, rebuild the tree and five, eight, nine is what's showing up on the sensor. And that is correct. You gotta make sure that you show the mass clearly. Uh, you don't have to like zoom in like I did there, but just make sure that it's very clear where it is. So that finishes that model. Let's move on to the next model. Now this one, we're going for 0 0.675 pounds. Nice, a model in pounds. So this is 1060 aluminum in inches. And for this one, I'm gonna start out on the top plane. I'm gonna sketch, and this is gonna be at 2.25. And we will bring that out to a height of 1.5, and that'll be right mouse button, mid plane, right mouse button. Then we'll go front plane, begin a sketch, and we will create a sketch here that comes across at seven inches and then comes up at 0.25. So that's at 0.5 divided by two, one. And then for these final dimensions, I'll just add them in with the regular you know, center line, doubled dimension. So we'll make another line here. Here's another kind of cool trick you can do. If you left mouse button and click and hold down the button when you drag to make a line, then when you let go of the line, you can just come over here and insta click for construction. So if you know that you're gonna be making a revolved part, that could be a nice little, little time saver. It's not gonna save you a ton of time, but it does save you a little bit of time uh, knowing that that line is gonna remain um, highlighted so that you can insta convert it into um, construction for construction line so we go features revolve that gives us that shape and then we can go front plane begin a sketch and we're going to sketch a rectangle here this is going to be 0 0.0625 by 0 0.75 and then we'll draw a construction line here 
and we can add the uh, sketch mirror to the context toolbar to quickly mirror that. And then if you're not sure if you got the math correct, you could click on this dimension and then just grab this grip and drag it down and just, you know, okay, yeah, 0.375, that's what that's supposed to be for that flat spot. So through all both directions, finish out that feature. And then the ribs, so we'll go front plane, begin a sketch, and I'm gonna uh, pick up the relationship there to the, um, in SolidWorks, they call them a, a silhouette edge. Pick up the relationship there, and then that's gonna give you that dimension from the detail view. And then this is gonna be a dimension to the, uh, I could just do this to the top plane. I could also pick the end point there maybe, but that's gonna be at 10 degrees, so 20 degrees over two. And we'll go features rib and drop in the rib there at 0 0.250 inches thick. And then we'll go top plane, begin to sketch, orient the view and create a line here from here to, again, to the silhouette edge. Let's make these two tangent. And then let's add the dimension here from the front plane to this angled line here at a dimension of 28, 28 over two. And then that's gonna be feature rib and hit the green check mark there. There we go. And then we could do a circular pattern and we could say we want to pattern this rib and this rib and we want to pattern them about this face here and we want it to be two instances equal spacing which should give us what we want there and now final cut extrude this is going to be at a diameter of 1.5 and it's going to be extrude cut through all and there we go let's rebuild and look at the sensor look at that 0 0.675 pounds so that looks correct as well. So now we've got our final model. So final model here, we're gonna go new. This is gonna be an ABS and MMGS. So ABS, MMGS, we're gonna go front plane. And we're gonna say that we want to take this up to a height of 88 and we wanna go over. This is the one that uh, using auto dimensions will be really helpful on 188 and 22. And of course, this is just how I'm modeling these. You, you could model these in a totally different method, totally different order, totally different sketches if you wanted to, just so long as the geometry is correct. The geometry has to be identical when, you, uh, when you're done. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same exact, you know, uh, methodology that I'm using here. You can come up with your own techniques. And it's, that's part of the fun of watching these leaderboard challenges is seeing how clever different people get with their uh, workflow for coming up with the, the correct geometry. But here what I'm doing, you can see I'm just creating the geometry that's running along the bottom of this part. I think the distance from here to here should be 150 because it's one, yeah, it's 175 minus 25. So 150 to that ledge. And then this line here could be converted and we'll go extrude. And this is gonna be offset from surface and it'll be this surface here. And the offset will be eight millimeters. That gives us that shape. That looks pretty good. And uh, then we could go back here to this back wall and we could do a rectangle. Again, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could maybe opt to offset, um, especially if you drew the whole thing. If you didn't do half, you could maybe do like an offset at eight from each side, but uh, a few different ways to do this one. Uh, I'm gonna add the sketch or the, uh, the fillet here right into the sketch. Normally I would do the fillet as its own external feature, but I think since this sketch is so simple, it's okay to just include the fillet right in there. Then I'll double click on this face so that I'm going up to that surface, but then I'll change it to offset from surface and I'll change that to 10. And that gives us the beginning of that pocket. And then we're going to, I almost uh, knocked my, my clock off the view there. You gotta make sure that that clock is visible during your run. You could get disqualified if the clock is not visible because it's important that we can see that the the um, clock is remaining in sync with the uh, you know with the true time, uh, so that there's no no shenanigans going on with like macros or time lapse or anything like that. So important to make sure that that clock is visible. If you knock it out, if you like scroll up or something, just make sure you come back and get that back in place. And now this is going to go through all. There we go. And uh, now I'm down to the final features down at this end of the model. So this is gonna be a 45 degree angle coming off of here and then it kind of goes into a flat spot. And of course, in your model, maybe you wanna combine some of these sketches together, that's fine too. You can totally, you can totally do this however you like. Whatever makes the most sense to you and helps you get through these models, 
as fast as possible. Uh, that way you can level up on that leaderboard, but I'm gonna choose to do these as separate features. So there's one of the features. Uh, the next feature I'm gonna do will be that slot. So we'll do a slot here, like so. And this is gonna have an opening gap of 28. And then the distance from here to this end is gonna be 175 and we'll extrude that through all. And then we'll finish up here with that kind of hex shape and then we get to do that cool mirror trick again. Always excited to do that mirror trick. So we'll go like this, over like so, and like so. And then this is gonna be dimensioned at 60 degrees, dimension from the center of this, uh, the slot radius to that uh, point is gonna be 30. And then the width of this hex is going to be 52 over two. And you notice this sketch is underdefined. That's fine. You don't have to fully define your sketches. Do whatever you got to do. You just need to get the geometry correct. So the geometry does have to be correct. Not just the mass, but the geometry has to be correct too. But um, that doesn't mean your sketches have to be fully defined or anything like that. So now I'm going to pick that face, hold control, pick this body out of the bodies folder, choose to mirror, and then right mouse button to finish that. And let's rebuild. Let's look at the sensor, 490, and that is what we were hoping for. So now I can click here to finish model three. And now this window is going to tell me that uh, that I did it. Hooray, that we did it here. And so we're going to say, um, I have read and understand and agreed to the challenge rules. There's my times, there's my CAD system. Everything looks good. I'm gonna choose submit. And now we see that my time is here on the leaderboard, 13 minutes, 31 seconds to make all three of those models and get them correct. And my CAD system is SolidWorks. So now I'm going to go through and uh, process uh, the video of my run. And then I'm gonna post that video on YouTube. And then what we'll see here is that the, uh, the video of my run will show up here because once it's posted on YouTube, I'm gonna go into uh, edit profile and I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna find the run that has the correct time. So monthly leaderboards, I'm gonna find the run that has the correct time. Here it is 1331, that's the correct one. And then I'm gonna to choose to submit the video uh, by pasting that link in there. So good luck to everybody. Uh, 1331, the gauntlet has been cast. Uh, you guys, uh, you know, can see if you can beat that time. It's a pretty fast time. Three models, 13 minutes, 31 seconds. See if you guys can beat it. Good luck. See you guys in the, in the leaderboard.